because you live, because you live, we live. We are a new creation in you. We are your masterpiece, Lord, and how awesome is that? But as we celebrate that gift that we are your, your workmanship, your masterpiece, we give the glory to you because it is you who created us. It is you who has given us life. And so, Lord, as we worship you and praise you today, let us always remember that to you be the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Do you want to know how God sees you? We are God's handiwork, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are God's handiwork. We are his workmanship. We are his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus. The psalmist gives us a glimpse of God's amazing process of designing each and every one of us from Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, says the psalmist, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know them full well. We heard that read today. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Think about that. And so I praise you. You have given me life. And so I praise you. That's what the psalmist is saying. We are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus. This is a powerful statement by Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 telling us how very important, how very important, how very special we are to God. The Greek word, now remember I said, we are very important and special to God. Okay, we're not very important and special so we can walk around body, but we are important and special because we belong to God. We are valuable, we are important, we are special because we are gods. And so the Greek word for workmanship is poema. We get our English word poem from that word, poema. And so that's why I share it with you. Workmanship is poema, the poem. We are poems of God, think about that. We are poems of God. God is the author and the source of all of life. He is the creator of heaven and earth, we say, and all that is in it. And we are his poem, his workmanship, his handiwork. When you and I were being formed inside our mother's womb, God himself was there. He was designing you and me, forming you and me according to his perfect plan. And he created your shape. You might argue with him, but he created your shape. He created your personality. He created your features. Again, we might argue with him on that. We, he created your temperament. He instilled in you and me gifts and abilities. He infused in you and me aptitude. And God was pleased. Continually in, in the book of Genesis during creation, he said, and I am pleased. I am pleased with what I have created. I am pleased with what I have created. With all, all the abilities and tendencies, the strengths and weaknesses, God is pleased with his creation. God wove into your being and my being everything that we are and are about. When you and I were born, he cried out, look at her. She's exactly what I had in mind. Look at him. He's exactly what I had in mind. A work of art, a masterpiece, my poem. Can you imagine God really saying that? <coughs> Applauding? applauding you and me that you and I are exactly what he had in mind. Well, have you ever stood 
uh, in the darkest place you can think of and looked up at the heavens. I know I've done this in Arizona. I turn off the car, I find a place out in the desert and I, and I turn off the car lights and you just look up at the heavens and you see the beauty of the, the heavens, the stars so, so bright against this black sky. It has to be uh, moonless also. It's the best to see. And you see the planets and, and you stare at this grand masterpiece and you think about God, and you see some shooting stars, and you see how vast God's creation really is. Maybe you wonder about God and his creation, and you wonder about his power, his awesomeness. You wonder at it all. As great as viewing this, this spectacular sight at night, nothing compares to his crowning achievement in humankind, in humanity. We are alone are created in his image. The pinnacle of the best that creation has to offer us cannot compare with his handiwork, with his workmanship as he created humankind. God's greatest masterpiece isn't some of the sunsets that we've enjoyed um, in our lifetime, the beauty of the sunset, or the beauty and phenomenon of the, the rainbow, when you can see the beginning and the end of the rainbow, it's fantastic, and we're just, we see that stretched out before us, the, the stunning landscape of the Alps, or the, the grandeur of the Grand Canyon, all of that is spectacular, isn't it? But it cannot compare compare to what God has done in you and me. We are his greatest creation. His greatest creation is you and it is me. We are God's great, greatest workmanship. We are God's greatest masterpiece. We are God's greatest home. God placed his hand on the shoulders of humanity and he said, you are something special. Now, you may not feel very special. You may feel like a mess. You may not feel like a masterpiece or a poem. That's because sin has encroached into our lives. That snake slithered into, into the Garden of Eden and life changed. And so you may feel like a mess. You may feel like you're not worthy of being called a masterpiece of God or of home. But from God's perspective, a work of art is exactly what you and I are. You see, the rest of the scripture verse of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 is that we are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Not only are we God's workmanship, we are his poem, we are created or recreated as a workmanship and a masterpiece of poem through Christ Jesus. What we lost in the garden with that slithering snake, we now have re-found, re-received. And so we are recreated in Christ Jesus to do good works. And to do good works doesn't mean opening the door and raking some leaves and carrying some luggage. And it is about all that we are to honor and bring glory to God. And all of that has been planned from the beginning, says the scripture. So in Christ Jesus, we are made anew in his death and his resurrection and through the blood spilled on the cross. We are made new. We have been made new. The old has passed. The new has come. As scripture says, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. The old life of sin has been defeated and destroyed by Christ on the cross. 
And so we are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus, because it is Christ Jesus who has renewed us and changed us. If we are joined to Christ Jesus through faith, that we say he is our savior, we are new creatures. We are reborn. We are renewed by the Holy Spirit. And the old things, the previous moral and spiritual um, condition that we lived within has passed away. The new things have come. And so God sees us as perfect through Christ Jesus, who has redeemed us and brought us back into a glorious relationship with our artist, with our poet, with our creator. Our creator God, the Father. I want to share with you a story, it's a little bit long, so bear with me, I think you'll appreciate why I'm sharing this. I was born with Down syndrome over 30 years ago. This makes some things very difficult for me. When I was younger, I spent a lot of time asking God, why did you make me with Down syndrome? Why can't I be normal like other people? I told him all the time that I didn't like having Down syndrome. I kept thinking that if only I didn't have Down syndrome, I would be happy. I thought that somehow God made a mistake when he made me. My mom and dad always told me that they loved me so deeply that they could not love me anymore. But somehow down deep in my heart, I always wondered if they would love me more if I didn't have Down syndrome. When I was in high school, the kids on the school bus were very mean to me. They laughed at me and mocked me, and they called me all kinds of bad names and told me that even my parents couldn't love me. That hurt me so deeply. When I got off the school bus in the afternoon, I would be crying. My mom met me at the door, and we would talk and pray every day. She told me that people used to say bad things about Jesus and call him names, too. So he understood exactly how I felt. She told me that real truth is only found in God's word and not in what other people say about you. She told me that if I could find anywhere in the Bible where God calls me bad names or said I was a mistake, she would pay me $5,000. I spent a lot of time reading in the Bible to find out what God said about me. All the scriptures I found said just the opposite. So I never got the $5,000. Some of my favorite scriptures are Psalm 139, verse 14, where God says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God tells me in Psalm 17, I am the apple of his eye. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, God tells me that I am his treasured possession. I know now that instead of being a mistake, I am the Lord's treasured possession. I like to memorize scripture and fill my mind with the truth of who God says I am. This understanding has made all the difference in my life. Now I recognize that God has a plan for my life. He created me just the way I am for his special purpose. I might still have Down syndrome, but now instead of saying, if only, if only I didn't have Down syndrome, I say, 
So what? I will glorify God just the way he made me. I know he loves me and cares for me with his whole heart. The Lord showed me that I am not a mistake, but I am a precious gift, his treasured possession. He made me just the way he made me for just the special purpose I was created for. There is special work he has for me to do that can only be done by me just the way he created me. If I spend my time wishing I was different, I will never get around to doing those things God wants me to do. I know God has given me special gifts and talents, and my desire is to use them for his glory. I say it often, and I mean it. I love my life. God does not make any mistakes, and that is the truth. No matter what we sometime may think, Jesus is my best friend, and I love him with all my heart. I am fully his. There is nothing more important in my life than pleasing him, spending time loving him and reading his word, talking to him and sharing his love with other people. His joy fills my heart. If your heart is sad because you wish God had made you different, read in his word the truth of what he says about you. Believe it and let him change your heart. Nothing is impossible with God. He certainly did change my heart. We are valuable. We are a masterpiece. We are poetry because of whose we are, not because of what we have done, but because of what he has done. Imagine getting up every day like this young woman. Imagine getting up every day with the truth, the promise, the conviction that you are God's handiwork, that you are God's masterpiece, that you are here for a purpose, the purpose of bringing glory to God. As Paul says, we are here to declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. And so Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are his workmanship. We are his poetry. We are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand for us to do. And what he has prepared for us to do beforehand while we in, were in our mother's womb was to bring glory to him. And so we exist to display God's glory into the world. In the final analysis, everything comes from God above and everything lives by his power and everything is for his glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as your workmanship, as your poetry in the world, we are humbled. We are awestruck. We want to feel cocky. We want to feel self-important, but we realize that in you, in you, Christ Jesus, we are all in all. In you, Christ Jesus, we are here to bring glory to God. In and through you, Christ Jesus, for all your work on the cross, for you redeeming us, we are made wonderful in the sight of God. And so we are called to bring glory to our God, to live out the poetry of our lives to live out our life song, to bring you honor and glory, to point the way to others to come to know you. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that we are so special and precious.
to you and to the world, for we are your voice and we are your artwork. The artwork reflects the heart, the heart of the artist. And so, Lord, we are your heart in the world. Help us to live honoring you in all that we do, all that we say, all that we think, all our hopes and desires and dreams. Let them be a poetry, a life song to you, Lord. As we come to you this day, Lord, we are praying for those in our midst and those beyond these walls, for those we know and those we do not know. And so we pray, Lord, for those who are struggling, for the McMillan family, for Jason and Keeley and Don and Paul, for Alan.